all going to be encouraged. And we'll have joy with me today. It's good to be here and good, good day to everybody who's watching. Yes, yeah, so and today we're going to talk about some interesting things. And we'd like to start it by reading a psalm. This is a psalm that they would read out loud during the, the Feast of Tabernacles. And uh, Joy, can you read part of the psalm? We'll read Psalms 81, okay. and just ten, verse 10 to 16. Okay, Psalms 81, 10 to 16, and this is the New King James Version. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. But my people would not heed my voice, and Israel would have none of me. So I gave them over to their own stubborn heart to walk in their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord would pretend submission to Him, but their faith would endure forever. He would have, fled, he would have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey from the rock. I would have satisfied you. Isn't that cool? This is a, a, a very good verse, but I do have a question for you, Jim. And I know uh, you can explain this better, you know. What okay. do you mean? Uh, in verse 16, it says, And with honey from the rock, I would have satisfied you. Can you explain that? Well, if, if you go back to Deuteronomy and the 32nd chapter, it says this, 30, 32 verse 13, it says, He made them draw honey from the rock and oil from the flinty ground. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the Song of Moses. This is the last things he said before he died. And he was reminding the people what God had done. And he said, he, he remembered that he gave you honey in the rock. Now, I want you to back up here and okay. think for a minute. Here's the children of Israel walking 40 years in the wilderness. They're going around. It's dry. I've been there. Mm -hmm. It's so dry that the, the sweat will, will come off you before you've, you notice you're sweating. Wow. Um, it's dusty. It's rocky, especially where they went. It's big, rocky places and things. And God fed them with manna. God gave them water. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul talks about the water from the rock. And... and um, that's what God promised to do. And He gave them quail. We mm -hmm. read too. Meat. That's right. But what happened was, is that God gave them more than, than that. Imagine you're a child of Israel. Child of Israel. Okay. You're going in the wilderness and you, you, of course your shoes aren't wearing out. God's doing for miracles. 40 years, Things wow. are happening. I don't know if you'd like that though. The same shoes for 40 years. Oh no. No, no. And they're going <laughs> on and they're going on. And, and, uh, um, all of a sudden, you hear the sound of a uh, You say, what is that sound? And, and they go over to a crack in the cliff, and once in a while, bees would make honey in the cliff. Now, it's very rare, especially in the yes. wilderness, but God obviously did a miracle and made it happen many times. And so he says he caused them to suck runny honey from the rock, meaning, this is what it really means, is that God in the midst of our trials and tribulations, God in the midst of all the good things he gives us, will give us more than we expected. He'll give us honey in the rock. He oh. gives us honey in times of trouble, honey in times of of, of uh, no dryness. Wow, that's powerful. I mean, that's a powerful encouragement for us who are, I mean, just for me, for me listening to you and reflecting back, you know, you, you do see the hand of God, you know, and uh, that's great. Well, the Bible talks about honey from Genesis to Revelation. Uh -huh. Often the word honey in the Bible means a sap that came down from the fig trees or date trees, that, that kind of a, a sap, but often it means like honey, bee honey. This is exactly a case of that bee honey. And, but it means something more. Remember when God says he's going to take him into a land that flows with, with milk, milk and honey. honey. Did that mean that when they got into Israel, <laughs> there's one river that Flowing has milk coming down, one that has honey coming down. He say, hey, Jacob, go down to the river, get me a bucket of milk. So he goes down the river, gets himself a bucket <laughs> of milk. Not quite like that. <laughs> and when you're down there, let's get a bucket of honey. You think that's what he meant? Not quite like that. What do you think he meant? <laughs> well, it means that God would provide whatever they need. In abundance. In abundance. It means abundance. It not only meant God would provide you right there, but it meant because God provided in Israel. Already, see, yes. And, and when he went in the wilderness, it means that God will provide above that. Yes. It's over and above. It's beyond. But the New Testament talks about that. Mm -hmm. It says God is able to do above and beyond whatever we can ask or think. Amen. That's our God. That's right. He's able to bless us, to give us more. 
That's right. That's 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 right, past. Uh, that's right, Pastor Jim. Uh, that's why a lot of people, they are uh, me included. Sometimes if I. I have a tendency to settle for what is good, you know. I find something that is good, and I'm quite happy with that. But you know what? If I wait upon the Lord, meaning if I I seek upon the Lord and and just allow Him to allow Him to bring it to pass, He brings the best. Like for example, I'm just gonna cite use you as an example, okay? You know, there was a time in my life I've been praying for a partner in life, you know, and I said, Lord, I want the man that you would you would have for me, you know, and I have suitors and I get other uh, men I would consider, you know, but then I waited because I don't want to settle for what is good. I want to get the best. Of course, of and course. Of, and, of course. And, and that's just one example. That's just and one example. And I got Jim McInnes, God's best. Ah. <laughs> I well, think you just that's open for interpretation. <laughs> I can see our Cambry people laughing, but... <laughs> but you have to agree. Yes. <laughs> No, but that's true. Well, it's exactly that. Because, you know, the word, the Bible says this. It says in Proverbs 24, 13, My son, eat honey because it is good. Mm -hmm. And the honeycomb, which is sweet to your taste. You see, only God knows what's good for us. That's right. You know, only God. You know, I, I kind of smile at, 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 at uh, I've been through all the, the sweeteners. I don't know if you've been, our listeners yes. have been through the sweeteners. I, went, I remember way back when the cyclamates, cyclamates and saccharin, and it's before your time, Yeah, before my time. And uh, then they said that was cancerous, which you later they took back cause in order to, you, you know, because it was, uh, have to drink it in such amounts. Then they said you shouldn't drink that, you should drink aspartame. Mm -hmm. Then everyone said, don't drink aspartame. Now you have to have uh, uh, Splenda now. Splenda. Then other ones say, don't drink Splenda, you should have uh, No, it's the stevia. stevia. Yeah. And then yet, I read an article how in Europe, Europe that they're forbidden stevia because it's, they say they think it's poisonous. You see, uh, there's many things we think are good. You mm -hmm. don't know whose report to believe. That's right. Anything God gives you he, that's really from God is good. I'm not talking about sweeteners and things now. I'm talking about life. The Bible says that he gives good gifts, mm -hmm. and honey is a symbol of that which is good. That's right. And, and honey is a symbol of what is good. It means, primarily speaks of the mercies of God. Wow. Now, uh, you know, Joy, it says mercies, mercies, plural. Plural. Not the mercy of God. Mm -hmm. Praise God, there's mercies. I need it every day. It says they're new every morning. That's right. I tell you, I got to pick up a bundle every morning. The mercies of God are new every day. That's right. Amen. Amen, for sure. Well, what it also means, Joy, is, is provision mm -hmm. in the rock. Do you have an illustration about how God provides provision in the midst yes, of this? Yes, um, I'm remembering, you know, maybe uh, I would say four years ago. No, no, not really. 19, 1989, my father had a stroke. And uh, s uh, several strokes, uh, you know, in a frame of a time frame of three months. And so, anyways, what happened is that um, he was bedridden, and he was bedridden for four years, you know. And he 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 was on uh, feeding tubes, and uh, we have to turn him every two hours. And he was on we're ha having a catheter, and and just literally uh, nursing care of uh, what do you call this? A uh, total nursing care needed. So anyway, looking back, he was he was he remained in that situation for about four years, I would say. And looking back, I have seen how God provided honey in the rock, in a, so to speak, because that was a hard place for every one of us in the family to see him. And God provided in terms of money uh, for for the for his care, because we have to to do a lot of tests and special food and medications and uh, personal helping and not only in terms of money there are times when we don't have the money God will bring in the doctor like there is um, one doctor I would just like to name him because um, uh, give honor where honor is due uh, we have a friend called Dr. Angelo Mangahas he would come uh, like clockwork every month to check my father's, uh, you know, tubes and change his uh, everything, you know, just come and check him. And he did this for free for many years until my father passed away. So that was like honey on the rock. People came in to give us encouragement, to pray for us, to support us, you know, and and that was for maybe four years. And I just praise God that uh, he, he for his mercies, you know, at that time are, are indeed new every morning for us. Because you see, no matter who you are, where you are, God may be blessing you right now. 
God may be giving you things, helping you like the children of Israel, but he says, I'm going to give you more. Amen. I'm going to give you above and beyond that. I want to give you honey in the rock. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, I got a story like yours I was reading. It was by a lady. She wrote a book called The Red Hand, and her name was uh, Josephine Knutz. And in 1940, she wrote about how it, during that time it was hard for work. Her daughter was sick, and in the sickness her daughter had, the doctor uh, told them that I, she recommended that the, she gave medicine, but the daughter should have protein and it said she'd eat one egg a day. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't have money for an egg. Her husband was out of work and they didn't know what to do. But they, someone said, we got to pray and ask God. And they says, have you ever asked God for things like that? Well, I asked God to take care of my soul. Mm -hmm. I asked God, but God will help you in every day. That's right. So she did. They prayed. Next morning when she got up, she heard a cackling in the yard. And... Uh, she looked out the window and there was a red hen kind of in the fence. So she went over to the red hen and, and, and it kind of walked away and there mm -hmm. was an egg. Wow. Wow. She said, wow, look, God gave me an egg. And so what she did is she, she, uh, she took the egg and gave it mm -hmm. to her daughter. And the next morning, the hen was back. She looked out her window, heard the cackling noise. This went on for quite a while, you know, wow. I forget the exact time it went on. And every morning, like clockwork, that hen was there, that red hen. And the gave egg. an egg. And then by that time, her husband had a job. They could afford more food. Mm -hmm. Her daughter was recovering from the sickness. Wow. And when her daughter was recovering, her husband started getting money. She looked out for the hen, and that very morning, it was gone. Never came back. Never came back. Wow. And she wrote a book about it because it was such a miracle. Indeed See, we serve a God who cares about us. He is the one that helps us. You know, he, he, he gives us honey in the rock. He gives us help in times of trouble. In fact, he gives us more than helps in trouble. Mm -hmm. I've been at this bedside of people that are in the hospital, many dying. Um, one of the harder duties of a pastor is you spend much time in places where people have suffering and have going through times. And I've seen many of these people, even in the midst of their pain, even in the midst of their suffering, suck honey from the rock. Like Pam, who we met yesterday, mm -hmm. had lunch with, mm -hmm. a wonderful girl who's gone through much pain. You'd never know it by looking at her. That's right. And she talks about how God has blessed her and helped her through these times. See, God is able not only to help us through our problems, God is able in the midst of our problems every once in a while. He doesn't do it every day, yes. but every once in a while you hear the sound of bees. <laughs> yes. And there is honey in the rock. Wow. And God comes and he gives us honey. Amen. That's good. It's good. I think that is really a great encouragement for many who would be watching or who are watching right now or going through a, a hard place or finding yourself in a hard place right now and you don't see, uh, you know, uh, anything good in your situation, but there is always something good because God is, is right there in your situation. I think another th important thing here, which we didn't talk about when we talked about in church here, is that we can find God's sweetness in the most like, unlikely places. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, I didn't think the Israelites thought they could find sweetness in these barren rocks. But you see, the Bible talks about this to get, for another reason the New Testament we will get to in a second. But you see, even in the midst of, of things we're going through, God will send unlikely angels to us. God will send unlikely messengers. So many times in my life, I've been blessed, not by the great preachers I've known or the famous people, ministers I, I've had the privilege to be with, but by the everyday people that, that somebody might look at and think, well, what do they have to give? But they brought the greatest diamonds into my mm -hmm. life. That's they right. brought the greatest things because God will send honey in the rock in most unlikely places. And if we're not ready to receive that, we're going to miss it. Yeah, you ever go to a store and they have a, I don't know if they did in the Philippines, but the labels fall off the cans. Uh-huh, that's true. Then they have a, an unknown can sale. You know, you don't know what's in the can, but they sell them for a dime or a nickel, you know. Man, you got some dented cans, there's no label on it, it looks funny, and you open it up and it's the sweetest fruit. That's right. There's a bunch of God's angels out there, meaning people, God that God's using. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not talking about real angels, even though God will do that too. But many people out there, that they look dented and they look uh, maybe not what you fit in. 
and yet God will use them greatly to bless you. That's right. And so it's good not to judge by outward appearance, you know, yes. because everybody can be a vessel uh, to bring a, a word of blessing, an act of blessing to somebody else, you know. It's so important. Mm -hmm. Another thing, you see, we have to remember, though, that in the Old Testament, it's talking about honey from the rock. It's a picture of Jesus Christ. We know in the New Testament that Jesus is our rock. I'll come to the rock. He is, the Bible talks again and again about rock. He told Peter, mm -hmm. he says, upon this rock, I'll build my church. He was not talking about Peter because there's two different words used. He looks to Peter and the word Peter means like a pebble, not a rock. And he says, but Peter, you are a pebble. You are but upon this rock, myself, I mm -hmm. will build the church. And the Bible talks about it being a rock. And let me tell you something. You may be sitting there today, and you're in a dry and weary place. There is nothing like finding honey in Jesus. Mm -hmm. When you find Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you will find real honey in the rock. You, you can have a time in your life when you're discouraged, you don't know the reality of a relationship with Jesus. And anybody who's really fallen in love with Jesus read, know that He is the true honey in the Amen. rock. When they said God gave them honey in the rock, that was a type, a symbol of the honey that God wants to give you through Jesus Christ. What do you think about that, Joy? That's powerful. That's powerful. And it's available for everybody who is open and willing, you know, to receive yes. Jesus Christ. So if you never had that honey, you can have that honey. That's right. Another thing interesting about bees, let me throw on the bees, because this is good. If you're a Christian, you belong to a church, this is very good, mm -hmm. because the bees, especially where we're talking about where it's hot, you know what they would do? Half of the bees will fasten their feet into the, uh, glue them into the, 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 the hive, and they'll get their, 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 their uh, wings? wings going. Uh -huh. It'd be like a fan, and they'll cool the whole hive. And half will go out and gather honey, and half of them will work and cool, cool the hive. And I was reading about how they can get up to 10 degrees different temperature in the hive than the outside. Oh, wow. What does that say is that in the body of Christ, everyone's needed. Everyone has a function. Mm -hmm. Some people are out gathering pollen, but some need to stay home and, 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 and use their wings. Mm -hmm. And that's why in the church, why everybody's important. Everyone. That's why we need every single person. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's good. Just like well, that bee you said, that the story of the bee. Yes. You know, that's right. Well, the next thing we want to talk about, though, the psalm says something else about honey. It says this, and it, well, it says that it it's also has to do with our words. Mm -hmm. And our words can be like honey. That's What's right. that mean? Well, you know what? We have the we have the we have the choice to to make to speak words that may be unkind or speak words that are kind, speak words that tear down and speak words that build up. And you know what? Uh, uh, it doesn't hurt to 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 show appreciation and express it. I, I remember, uh, Jim, there was uh, this story by Watchman Nee, you know, about a, uh, a husband and a wife, and and the. The, the wife was feeling like unappreciated and was feeling she was failing as a mother and as a wife because she never heard anything, a, any remark from her husband about uh, anything positive or anything uplifting. So anyways, so she felt that she was a, uh, she was a um, how do you call this, a failure as a mother as, and as a wife. And she, they, the people or the doctors at that time attributed that uh, for her having tuberculosis. So at her deathbed, her husband was saying, oh, what are we going to do now? Because you do so well, you did so much. And the wife said, how come you never said that to me? You never said, well done. You never appreciated me. And all this time, I've been feeling miserable. I've been feeling, I've been blaming myself. So like I, like I said, you know, our words can, can bring life to another person. The choice of our words can bring life to under, another person. It can be like honey that can bring healing to the person's soul. Yeah, Psalms 119, 103 says this, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey in my mouth. In Song of Solomon 4, verse 11 says, Your lips, O my spouse, drip with the, as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under your tongue, and the fragrance of your garments like the fragrance of Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And pleasant words in, in Proverbs 16, 24, pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Health That's just bones. what you said. Yes. You know that, that, that 
Uh, the Bible talks about um, how when someone comes with these nasty words and mm -hmm, they're hurting, mm -hmm. it's like dryness to the bones. That's right. Especially in a spouse, it says. And you know that, that, that you can give life by having honey in your words. You know, the Bible talks about the Word of God is like honey. That's the best thing to have on your tongue. That's right. Is a word of the Lord. But so many of us, we have hurts. And we have uh, rejections and things to deal with in the past. And we, we get into a situation, we latch out, mm -hmm. we don't give life. And we don't realize that uh, our words either can curse or bless. Our words can build up or tear down. Now, the, the hard part is to realize the Bible says that we'll be accountable for all our words. That's right. Every word we speak. I was listening to someone the other day talk about how many words we speak a day. Mm -hmm. And that by the end of our life, if we live to be like 70 or 80, we've spoken, I think it was a half a billion words. Wow. Imagine being judged by those words. Well, that's why I thank God for his forgiveness. We come to mass for forgiveness and cleansing and he does it. Now, before we end, I want to get the last point here. We only got a few minutes left, but the, you began by reading a part where it mm -hmm. said, open your mouth and I'll fill it. Yes. Now, being, I used to be a dentist, so when I, I tell my patients, open your mouth wide and I know exactly what to do, what I'm supposed to do. But what do you mean by that? So Coming from the patient, light of the scriptures. What do you do if people don't open their mouths wide? Well, we put something like to help them open. Like we put a gadget in her mouth to keep them to help them open their mouth. <laughs> so it's like force them to help them. Well, again, it's in the same section we talked about, honey. The reason it says open your mouth wide because of the second part, so I'll fill it. I mean, some people, God says, I want to bless you, open your mouth wide, and they go, you know, they, they go, oh, just a little bit. Uh -huh. I mean, if you really want, ever see these baby birds? We got, you know, birds mm -hmm. in our yard, blue jays and everything. Yes. You ever see these baby birds? You ever see them, uh, those you people watching here, you see these baby birds? How do they open their mouths wide when mama comes? So they just go, okay, I want some. No. What do they do? They act like they're at a caffeine kick. They open their mouths so wide, it looks like, you know, their, their beaks are going to break. And they go, ah, 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 and they're finding you want it right away, right? That's right. Well, uh, that's the picture I see in this. That's right. You know, God says, open your mouth wide, and I'm going to fill it with good things. And we sit there and say, okay, God, and we don't realize we can have as much of God as we want. He says, open it wide. And our trouble is that we don't realize that God is a God who wants to bless us mm -hmm. and his invitation to open wide. And I, many times I pray with people, especially to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and things in their life. And I say, open your mouth wide. Of course, I don't mean that they should sit there in church and go, ah. What I mean is that they should, um, uh, you know, open their hearts wide. Be say, God, yeah. I open my life to you. I say, God, take everything. Fill me. I want all that you got. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I want all that you got, God. You know, I think one of the greatest shocks we're going to get when we get to heaven is how much we've missed of the good things God had for us. You know, we're always so busy talking about, won't it be wonderful there? Not realizing that, yes, Heaven is a destination. We are, if you know Jesus Christ, if you're born again, you'll be going to heaven. But what we forget to realize is that God has promised us honey in the rock now. Mm -hmm. God has promised us today that he'll bring blessing. Amen. 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 Because God said, you know, I want you to have life and have it more abundantly. So if our heart is expectant and open to everything that God has, then you know what? We can receive as much as we can. We, cannot, we, we, are, we are the only ones who limits our ability to receive from the Lord. But if we're like the deer that pants for the water brooks, hungry and thirsty, then we will get it. If you're watching here today and you say, I'd like to have some of that honey in the rock. First of all, I want to ask you, do you know the rock? Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Maybe you go to church. Maybe you, you think Jesus was a good uh, prophet. But the Bible says to become born again and, and to spend eternity with God, you have to do more. You have to invite Him into your life. You have to confess Him as Lord. You have to believe that God has resurrected Him from the dead and invite Him into your heart and your life. And that's what you can do right now. And if you are a Christian watching, I want you to realize that God wants to give you honey in the rock where you are now. 
God wants to bless you. So let's pray for the people right now, Joy. Amen. Why don't you pray for them? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are the honey in the rock, Father God, for all of us. And Lord, we thank you that in our time, Lord God, where we are in a hard places, Father God, we find ourselves in hard places. We find ourselves in trying um, situations. Father, we thank you that as we call on upon you, Lord God, Lord God, you will bring a relief. You will bring an answer. You will come and intervene through your Holy Spirit. So, Father, our prayer, Father God, is Lord, for those of us who are listening right now and, and who, who wants to open up their hearts to you, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to come into our hearts, come into our hearts and reign over our lives. And we ask you that you forgive us of all our sins, forgive us of all our wrongdoings, and we submit to you our lives, accepting you and honoring you as Lord of our life. And Father, we just thank you, Father God, that you are the God who, who wants to give the best for every person. And we thank you, Lord. We just, Lord God, like the scripture says, we open our mouth wide and you will fill it. Fill it with everything that you have, the, you have planned and purpose for each one of us. So Lord, we submit our lives to you. We accept, Lord, your, your, uh, your working in our lives. And Lord, we just trust you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, until next week, you be encouraged. And remember, there's honey in the rock for you. Hi, I am Joy McInnes, and I would like to welcome you to Venice Only Christian Books and Gift Store, Joyful Expressions. Joyful Expressions is located in beautiful downtown Venice. We carry a complete assortment of books, gifts, and cards. We are nonprofit and interdenominational. So please stop by, have a cup of coffee, and come and browse. We want to be a blessing to you. We are open from Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Joyful Expressions. <laughs>